Hey everyone, it's Brian and Jeff with WorkshopAddict.com. We always have a lot of cool cars behind us, but we really never get to take you through some of the projects that we do with them. Today we're going to take that opportunity and walk you through some of the things that we do on a daily basis. Today we're going to be working on a 2012 Mustang GT that over the past couple of months we've made a lot of horsepower and suspension upgrades to it. Now the next step is to get this guy to stop. And we've got this car hitting hard. So we went to Summit Racing and looked up the Ford Performance Mustang GT 14 inch brake upgrade kit. It's model number M2300S and we feel that that's going to take care of some of our braking issues as far as 0 to 60 stopping, but also take care of that mushy pedal that this car comes with from the factory. This is a complete kit to upgrade your brakes. It comes with four piston Brembo calipers with the brake pads already pre-installed. And you also get new performance 14 inch rotors. Comes with the Ford 14 inch dust shields, rear brake pads, mounting hardware, and stainless lines front and rear. So prior to installing this brake upgrade, we went out and did some 60 to zero mile an hour test hits just to give us a comparison as to what we can expect as far as performance upgrade from these brakes. We've let the car cool a little bit. Now we're gonna walk you through the installation of this brake upgrade. Let's go turn some wrenches. Installing this brake upgrade can be done on the floor with jacks or it can be done on the lift. We're gonna start out by removing the front tires with Milwaukee's 2763 impact wrench in a 21 millimeter socket. Start off by removing the ABS line from the brake line. Then we're gonna come around back using our Milwaukee quarter inch ratchet. Pull the 10 millimeter bolt off, holding the brake line on. And then we're just gonna break the, the hard line loose from the brake line, make it easier when you get to that point, it's already loose. And we'll pull the bolt out of the frame. Coming around the back to remove our caliper using a 15 millimeter socket. And these are a little tighter, so we're gonna go with our Ingersoll half inch ratchet. Pull the caliper back out of the way. Let it hang, take your rotor off. Next step is to remove the factory dust cover where there's three 10 millimeter bolts. And reinstall the replacement dust cover with the provided hardware. Before installing the new rotors, just take some mineral spirits or brake clean and clean your rotors off to make sure there isn't any oil or grease residue left on them. Take your new caliper, slide it into place, and attach it with the new bolts provided in the kit. They recommend tightening these to 85 foot pounds. So we've got our torque wrench out here and we'll do that. There you go. Caliper and rotor installed. Next step is installing the brake line. I've already started the 10 millimeter bolt, holding it in. Pull your plug out, your banjo bolt with the copper washers, one on top, one on bottom. Start it into the caliper. Once you got your line installed, tighten it up, 15 millimeter socket, 15 to 24 foot pounds. Now we're gonna remove the factory caliper. We've already pre-loosened this line, make it a little easier since we've got the bracket off the frame. Roll your new line up into place, reattach the hard line. Reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt in the frame rail. Thirteen millimeter line wrench again. Snug up the hard line. And 
and go back and tighten up the 10 millimeter bolt on the strut. Making sure your line clamp is lined up. Lastly, make sure you have good brake line travel. This will float in the, the, the clamp that you put to the strut. And then reattach your ABS lines with the zip ties provided. Cut your zip ties off. That finishes up the front, we're on to the back. Moving to the back, first take off your wheel and then we'll take the rear caliper off. Once the caliper is off and out of the way, simply slide your old brake pads out. Reinstall your new pads. Squeak plate goes to the inside. And then we have to push our piston back, which on this one is a rotary design. So you just use this fancy tool right here and it'll ratchet it back into position. Once your piston's pushed in, take your tool off, slide your caliper back into place. Reinstall the bolts. Tighten them down and then we'll move on to the brake line. Okay, now to change the brake line, start off by removing your ABS line from the brake line. Then we're going to take the hose off the caliper. Undo your hard line. Then we have to remove the ABS from the frame bracket. Reinstall the ABS. Put the frame bolt back in. Reinstall your hard line. Grab your banjo bolt and supplied copper washers. Reinstall that to the caliper. And tighten that up to 15 to 24 foot pounds. Make sure your frame bracket is tight. And again, retighten your hard line using a 13 millimeter line wrench. Only thing left is to zip tie your ABS wire back to the brake line. Bleeding the brakes can be done in a lot of different ways. We're going to use our Motive Power Brake Bleeder. It makes it simple. We're just going to put some pressure on this. Once I get up to around 8 to 10 pounds of pressure, I'm going to tell Jeff that he can start with the furthest away brake. Fluid's moving and you can see the air bubbles coming through the line. Once you've completed bleeding the brakes, Get your tires back on and torque the lugs down to 90 foot pounds. So we took the car out for a ride, we broke in the brakes, did a lot of different exercises to make sure that the pads meshed perfectly with the rotors. Then we went back and did our testing and we were able to reduce our stopping distance from 60 to zero by 28 feet. So that meant our best stopping distance was 111 feet. Which is substantial. I mean, you're talking 30 feet drop just by changing your brakes. And not only that, the pedal feel is significantly different where before you might have stood on the brakes a little bit and said, oh, come on, stop. Now, when you stand on them, you're gonna stop. It's just yeah. there. You notice the ABS point on the factory brakes where like you said, you're hoping you're gonna stop. You know you're gonna stop now. So this is an awesome upgrade for anyone who doesn't have the track pack on their Mustang GT or even V6 Mustang. So. The tools needed are very simple. You can do this in two hours in your driveway. Possibly the only tool that you might need that's out of the ordinary is the caliper 
adjuster for the rear caliper. You have to kind of turn it in. And we showed you it in there. You can rent them in a lot of different places, but they're cheap enough grab one. We'll put the link down there. Summit Racing has them. It's a great place to go buy some parts. We love them because they can usually get us stuff next day and it doesn't cost. They have, they have shipping areas everywhere. Anything you need, they have. Even these tools. So a lot of the other tools that we have here, we used a lot of Milwaukee. We love these M12 ratchets, but this is a look inside our shop, what we do, how we use some of these tools and what you see behind us is actually what goes on most of the time rather than some of these videos. So we appreciate your time guys. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We keep you up to date with different projects, tool reviews, tool news, and other things like that. Again, thanks for your time. Have a great day.